welcome to video 2 of the Connecting Rod series presented by ESA Core and brought to you by MSE Software. In this video we're going to be going over application settings, groups, and geometry cleanup. So first we're going to go to Options tab, click Application Settings, and you can see we have our uh, options here. First thing we're going to do is change our undo uh, command to 50 so now we could do 50 undos instead of 20. Next we're going to go to units and parameters. We're going to go to units and we're going to go to our unit system here. But first I wanted to look at our uh, fundamental units and these are what's going to be used in our derived uh, units. This will uh, be used for in a consistent and inconsistent uh, when importing into Nastran. And you can see right here, uh, these units are all consistent and these units are inconsistent. Now what this means is, just by looking at it, we could see millimeter inconsistent, millimeters, kilograms, seconds, millinewtons, rads. But if you go to the inconsistent millimeters, you have newtons instead of millinewtons and you have degrees instead of rads. Now in your derived units that's going to cause a problem because all of the units aren't going to be uh, consistent with Nastran which is why you have consistent and inconsistent here. So we can also create our own by right clicking in here and go create new and create our own units and they will more than likely be labeled inconsistent unless you made them to where they are uh, consistent with Nastran settings. Now for this uh, tutorial we're just going to go with inches. Hit apply, okay. Next we're going to go to parameters and we're going to change decimal places to 4. And apply again. We're going to go to meshing and you can go to element quality parameters and here's where you can change the uh, element quality checks to be more or less stringent depending on your customer or your own company standards. Now once you have uh, set out after you create new and set your own settings you can export these settings so that way if returning customers uh, want more work done they could you could come to these files and just go to import mesh quality settings and import it per customer so that way it'd be better organized uh, for each particular customers uh, specific needs and so for right now we're gonna go and keep these at default next we're gonna go to tolerances and in tolerances we're going to go to very fine now the face tolerance really depends on your graphics card now default is medium and as you can see it's kind of blocky here but if you go to very fine and hit apply it smooths everything right out now once you do this uh, depending on your graphics card it may start to lag a little bit get a little choppy and start jumping as you can see right there mine doesn't jump I was just simulating so you can see what I meant or you may turn it and it'll pause and all of a sudden it'll rapidly be to where you are turning. So that's where lag and uh, jitters, as we call them, will come in. If that starts to happen, just reduce your face tolerance to fine. If it's still a little more jittery than you would like, you can reduce it down to medium. Uh, my graphics card is fine, so I'm going to keep mine at very fine and hit apply. Next, I'm going to go to import export, and here we have two options we have flat and we have hierarchical. Now flat writes uh, an entire, all the entire model to one single file BDF. Now <clears throat> for smaller uh, assemblies this is fine, there's no problem with that, uh, but once you start getting to more massive assemblies you may want to go to hierarchical. Now hierarchical will break uh, an assembly down and to each individual parts the BDF will only contain the analysis and loading conditions and will have an, in, an include lines that will refer to a folder that it created that has all of the dat files any contact that you may have or 
anything like that. Now, that might be more beneficial when you start dealing with massive assemblies and need to make any sort of tiny changes instead of going to one massive BDF and looking for one individual element or node uh, you could just go to the individual part where you know the elements and nodes are and find them that way so that makes things a lot easier it also makes it easier if you wish to swap parts out rather than uh, rewriting out a new BDF for maybe one bushing that was changed or a connecting rod that was changed so that's how it could also save you time there. So I always go hierarchical. And that's what we're going to do here. I'm go ahead and hit apply and OK. And now we're going to look at our groups and make sure everything imported correctly and we're not missing anything or have multiples of anything. So I'm going to expand all the containers by clicking the expand all containers button. I could do this one by one but in massive assemblies that may be tedious so it may be easier to just hit expand all containers it'll do it all at once now I could see here there should be one body per group now the articulated rod is perfectly good and I go down more and I see that the piston ring has multiple bodies in the same group now I don't need these so I could just go ahead and highlight them and delete them same thing for the piston pins and piston ring 2, piston ring 3, piston ring 4. Okay, so now all my bodies are in their individual groups. I don't have multiple bodies, so our groups look good. Finally, we need, well, I'm going to collapse the containers first and then re expand just the assembly. So now it's nice and neat. So now we need to clean up the geometry using the geometry cleanup tool. Now, this tool is in the geometry edit tools and geometry cleanup. Uh, this tool helps fix any faults in a body like slivers or cracks or really small features that would mess up an analysis or uh, a mesh. Now, for this uh, example, I'm going to use the auto cleanup tool, which is the first option that's normally highlighted. Now. I'm going to highlight everything and hit my middle mouse button and in the status bar on the bottom left you can see it says it cleaned 11 objects. Now I do this for this particular model because there's no small features I need to worry about but if you do have a model that does have small features you need to worry about you can go to the find and fix small features option and it will bring up uh, a few options here that it'll look for and the second one uh, second options tab here we'll look up for gaps and overhangs and small edges so once you look for uh, errors and faults you can either go by component or the entire assembly and hit your middle mouse button in this case I have no uh, features detected or small body slivers or what have you if you did you would come up to the model browser and then you would come up to the geometry cleanup tab and it would display each individual error that it's looking for from here and it would say what body it's in as you can see here if this one part had multiple bodies it would say what body it's in and it would also say what part it's in what part group so it narrows it down uh, so you don't have to go looking in each individual part you could just go right here and it'll tell you exactly where it's at, what the error is, and you have the option to either have Apex automatically fix it and click the auto fix here, or you can fix the individual errors yourself by using the different geometry edit tools like vertex edge drag or push pull, what have you. Um, so these two options will find these small edges, faces, and surfaces and errors and gaps and overhangs. The final option is to display geometry faults, find and display geometry faults. Now what this does would be like for instance this connecting rod you see this flat surface face here. Now it looks flat to the human eye and even if we zoom in it probably looks flat but to the to the model or to the mesh there may actually be small tiny bumps there or little twists that we can't see. Now what this 
tool does, or this option does, is it will find these uh, faults and say, hey, this face is no good, uh, there's bumps in it, uh, try and fix it. And again, there's different ways you could fix it, just deleting the face and fill it with a new face, or there's multiple different ways you could fix that particular problem. Or possibly cutting it out and then filling it back in. But this will show you if there's any uh, geometry type faults there. So I did the automatic cleanup since I didn't have any really fine features that I needed to worry about and selected everything and clicked apply. And that does it for this tutorial.